It's 7 a.m. on a very chilly London morning, but the early start is going to be worth it because we're doing something pretty cool today. We're heading to the Nurburgring. Tiff apparently is bringing a pretty decent piece of kit to get us there. Here he is. Good morning, Mike. I trust you approve of the wheels. Mr. Nadell, <laughs> this will do nicely. We've got a train to catch. So look, get your kit in the bag. Right, yep. We'll open the boot and let's head down to the Channel Tunnel. Right. Onwards. Seatbelt on, be a good boy. <laughs> this weather's not so good, Mike. No, not great. And actually, this is my first time doing this. I've only what? ever got the ferry or flown there before. So this is my first time using Eurotunnel. Will this thing even fit? Yes, we booked the single deck area, which is popular with most supercars. So there might be some cool stuff with us then. Probably not, probably with the crew. And they're not pretty cool at all, <laughs> let's be honest. And Mike, just to spoil you on your first trip to the tunnel, we're in Flexi Plus, which means a free lunch. I wonder if they'll have soup. I fancy a soup in this weather. Have you got an um umbrella or anything, though? What? Got a coffee hood. Yeah, Come on, Dave. All right for some. Oh! That is ripping. Michael, welcome to the Flexi Plus Lounge. Your teas and coffees are over there, and a cup of uh, black coffee for me, please. Don't forget the sugar. Yes, sir. Here's your coffee, Tiff. Four sugars, is that enough? Uh, yeah, just, just about enough. Are you going to use all those sugars? Of course. Is that, a, is that a racing driver thing? Energy, energy. Oh, Mike, where's the stirrer? <sighs> right, let's get to the train. There they are, look. You see, look, the whole side's open for us. Slide on in. And you can see right down the whole train. That is cool. To be honest, Mike, on the move. We are off. Without driving. Now, the reason that we're going to the Green Hell is I wanted to chat to you about a race back in the day, a race in one of these, a 1989 oh. Porsche 962. What a car. And yes, I raced in the Nürburgring. Group C back then, that was that amazing decade from, what, 82 to 92. Yeah. Probably the best decade of world sports cars I was so privileged to be a part of. And it was obviously quite a tough race for you because you finished 15. Uh, yeah, yeah, OK. Yeah. And was that, was that your first race at the Nürburgring? It was, yeah. First time I ever raced the Nürburgring. A lot of troubles. We had these uprights, we had a fire at Le Mans, the uprights weren't machined properly, the new ones, the air wasn't going through as we found it afterwards, so we spent a troubled race with a brake pump in the pedal, you know, up and down every straight to try and get some uh, pressure up. I can't imagine brake failure in a Group C car is something that you want. Once you're across the channel, there's a whole host of motorsport venues within reach of the tunnel. There's Le Mans, Spa, Zolder, Zandvoort, Paul Ricard, Rams, and then, of course, the Petrolhead pilgrimage destination, the Nürburgring, via the legendary German autobahns. To get there, you can pass through the beautiful Belgian towns of Leuven and Ghent. You can even take a slight detour and end up in the stunning medieval surroundings of Bruges. And before you know it, it's daylight again. France. Time to hit those French roads. Come on, get back on board. in France, and the rain stopped. Look, it's dry. So that was really easy, but how did you do it back in the day? Well, it was all ferries, I mean, there was no other choice, so. Right. And did you guys drive yourselves, or did you go with the team, or how No, we used to drive ourselves. If I were to race with Derek Bell, I had a very nice Porsche 944 Turbo as oh, my company nice. car. Right, so it's just the 300 miles to the Nürburgring. Easy. Hey, you've got coffee in here. So you are associated with Porsche, so you're probably going to see me as the enemy because I'm a massive TWR oh. Jaguar fan. And actually, I've brought my jacket. Do you want to see my no, jacket? No, no! You are talking about the team that stopped you sitting beside a Le Mans winner. Oh, for Purple and green sake. vintage. It's actually slightly too big for me, but it might fit you oh, perfectly. Never, 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 never. Fine, sorry, I'll put it up. What was the most expensive car to go through? The tunnel. There's going to be some nice stuff. It's definitely going to be a hypercar. So I'm going to go Bugatti Veyron and I'm going to say £3 million. It was a 
was actually a LaFerrari estimated at about five and a half million now. Damn, yeah, they've gone up in these prices. I know, where did that come? Here we are in the bike, Nurburgring. That iconic red sign there, that is seriously cool. Is this Fangio at the entrance here? Oh yeah, the statue of Fangio with his Mercedes. What was that, 1955? Magic. Let's have a look. So here we are on the start finish line of the famous Nurburgring. Are all the memories coming back? Indeed they are. Sadly, the track's closed today. We can't take the BMW around it, but you fancy a walk down memory lane? Yeah, absolutely. The more nostalgic, the better. Unfortunately, this is bringing back more nightmares than happy memories, because <laughs> in 1989 with a Porsche, we had a problem with big problem with overheating brakes. So coming down that hill, I'd be pumping the pedal with my left foot to build some pressure up. The S bend at the top there, which is now called the Michael Schumacher S, was a fantastic corner in Group C, because you just had to lift a little bit, you couldn't yep. quite take it full throttle. Now you're through the chicane, up the hill, and then of course a left onto the epic Nordschleife. Unfortunately not, because in 1989, the Group C race was on the Grand Prix track, so I, I turned right in my Porsche now. Are you trying to tell me we've come all the way here just to walk around the GP track? Of course not! We've got to go around the Nordschleife, all those memories, history is there. Thank God for that. We come to the first of the famous blind crests, this one, the Flugplatz, where cars would take off. Don't really have time to look, but that's a pretty little view of Adenau. As in Adenau Bridge? Indeed, where we'll be arriving shortly. And this, of course, must be the most famous corner in the whole world. Yeah, the famous carousel. Carousel. But the banking, you can fly up the bank. <laughs> I always look forward to cars coming around here, because you have two choices, don't you? You either stay low and yeah. steep, or high and a bit more shallow. Well, of course, the Nürburgring itself is actually a toll road, so you can turn up, drive all the way here from the UK, pay your ticket, and then you can drive your car on here. But this corner, you really have to be careful on. It's the second section, because people think it opens up more. It's a bit of a blind crest, you can't see the exit. And you see those nice, shiny bits of new guardrail. I did see them. Well, that's what you have to pay for if you hit them. And here in the middle of the Flants Garden section, it was one crest too many for Stefan Beloff. He'd, he'd just set that iconic lap record. On the very next lap, maybe he got a little bit quicker, he came over that crest, the air got under the Porsche, flew, hit the barriers, and he was perfectly unharmed, but it was the end of his race. But that lap record is still the one everybody talks about. Well, it's just so impressive considering how difficult the track is. And there's a reason why so many manufacturers come here to test their cars, because it's just such a huge test of what a car can do dynamically. Well, I think we've covered everything, so back to the Beamer. Yeah, just the, uh, the long straight to go. Come on, keep that. come on, come on. Well, thanks for the tour, Tiff, but I feel for some content we need to get you back in a 962. Surely you've got a racing friend that can help us out for some content. Yeah, that's a wonderful idea. You know, I think I might just know someone.